So the neuromuscular junction. Before we get into this, let's take a broad overview of how our muscles start moving. I'm going to start all the way in the brain. That's, sorry, excuse me. Start in the brain, and um, if you can remember, remember where the where the tracks go. Remember we have the internal capsule that will end up synapsing in your spinal cord. And remember it goes down that cortical spinal tract, and finally it's going to leave that spinal cord and it's go out. And that nerve is going to go all the way to the muscle. And where that nerve hits that muscle, where the connect is called the neuromuscular junction. So what happens is the action potential will go down, and the action potential at the end of the nerve, which is here, will cause acetylcholine release. Acetylcholine will hit the acetylcholine receptors in the muscle. This is the muscle. And that will trigger an action potential in the muscle itself. And the action potential is going to go down. And it's going to go down these things called T-tubules, which are just very deep. In, um, basically allow the action potential to go from the surface of the muscle. This is all at the surface. It's going to go deep. Okay, so remember we're at the surface, and the T-tubule is going to go deep. And you're going to go deep because you need to get to the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which are structures in the muscle that, can t that hold a lot of calcium. So what happens next is that your... Um, your calcium is going to be released thanks to these action potentials, and the calcium is going to bind. And there's two um, protein main protein filaments making up a muscle fiber. So there's actin and there's myosin. So there's actin and myosin. Calcium is going to bind to the troponin, which is on actin. It's going to allow your myosin to bind, and it's going to allow them to all contract, and you're going to get muscle shortening and you get tension. And we're going to get all into detail about that. But first, we're going to focus on this in the red box. And when we go into more details here, remember the action potential comes down. We're at the nerve terminal, and this is the muscle fiber here. Action potential comes down, and it's going to cause depolarization and a more positive potential inside the cell. So you have voltage-gated calcium channels here that's going to sense that. And when um, they sense that depolarization, they are going to open, and they're going to let calcium come in. So calcium is going to come in thanks to the action potential. And calcium is going to trigger... This, you have these synaptic vesicles holding the acetylcholine. It's going to trigger the exocytosis of these vessels, vesicles. And there's a little detail here. There's these proteins called snare proteins. Okay, There's multiple snare proteins. The ones you want to remember are SNAP25 and SNAPTOBREVIN. Um, just know these because these are very important um, in Botox function. But these proteins will attach to the vesicle and allow, it for, allow exocytosis. So acetylcholine is going to come out. It's going to get sent out, and it's going to bind to these receptors here. And when it binds to the receptors, it's going to cause an action potential in the muscle cell. Um, action potential is going to go down, and then the rest will explain more. Now, if you don't do anything, then your acetylcholine is going to keep hanging out on this junction, um, and it's going to keep binding to those receptors, and it's going to keep sending action potential, and you're going to get constant muscle firing. So if you need to, that to stop, you need something called acetylcholinesterase. If you know that, you can, the name tells you everything. Esterase means it's going to break down. So it helps you break down acetylcholine. And uh, when that happens, you're going to get termination of the signal. So that's it for the neuromuscular junction.